In this video, we will derive the projectile motion equations. Let's say an object is traveling through space and there's a gravitational field that is pointed downward. At time t0, which we will set to 0 seconds, the object has an initial velocity of v0. Now let's set up our axes. The positive direction for the y-axis points upward, which is the opposite direction of the gravitational acceleration vector, g. The x-axis is perpendicular to the y-axis, and its positive direction points to the right. The object is initially located at a point x0, y0. At some future time t, the object will be at a new position, xy, and will have a new velocity, v. We want to predict the x and y components of the velocity, which we will call vx and vy, at some future time t. We also want to predict the x and y coordinates of the object at some future time t. We start with the equation for the acceleration in the x direction, which we will call ax. This is equal to the time rate of change of vx, which is written as dvx dt. Let's rearrange the expression to isolate dvx, then integrate ax dt from the initial time, which is 0 seconds, to the final time t. dvx is integrated from the initial velocity vx0 to the final velocity vx. We can perform a similar set of steps for the acceleration in the y direction, which we will call ay. This is equal to the time rate of change of vy, which is written as dvy dt. Let's rearrange the expression to isolate dvy, then integrate ay dt from the initial time, which is again 0 seconds, to the final time t. dvy is integrated from the initial velocity vy0 to the final velocity vy. As we will see, the integrals on the left-hand side of the equations are easy to solve, but we will need to know the expressions for ax and ay before we can solve the integrals on the right-hand side of the equations. We now are going to make some simplifications to the problem, which will allow us to obtain expressions for ax and ay that make the integral on the right-hand side of the equations very easy to solve as well. First, we will assume there is no air friction. This means that we will not account for drag, which would decelerate the object. This assumption is okay if the object does not travel very fast, is very heavy, or if the air density is very low. Second, we will assume that the gravitational acceleration vector always points downward in the negative y direction and has a constant value of negative 9.81 meters per second squared. This assumption is okay if the object does not travel very high from the surface of the Earth. Finally, we will assume that the Earth is flat and does not rotate. This assumption is okay if the object does not travel very far in the x direction. Using these three simplifications results in ax being equal to zero and ay being equal to the gravitational acceleration g. Let's plug in ax and ay into the two equations above. For the left equation, the integral of dvx is vx, and the integral of 0 times dt is 0. Evaluating vx from the initial velocity to the final velocity gives vx minus vx0, which is equal to 0. After rearranging the equation, we are left with vx is equal to vx0. This means that the x component of the velocity is constant in time. For the right equation, g is constant and can be pulled out of the integral. The integral of dvy is vy, and the integral of dt is t. Evaluating vy from the initial velocity to the final velocity gives vy minus vy0, and evaluating t from the initial time to the final time gives t minus 0. After rearranging the equations, we are left with vy is equal to vy0 plus g times t. 
This means that the y component of the velocity decreases with time since g is negative. Some people prefer to use positive 9.81 meters per second squared as the value of g instead of negative 9.81 meters per second squared. If that is the case, then the equation for vy would be vy naught minus g times t. You can use either equation as long as you are consistent with your signs. Now let's derive the equations for the x and y coordinates of the object at time t. We start with the equation for the velocity in the x direction, vx. This is equal to the time rate of change of x, which is written as dx dt. Let's rearrange the equation to isolate dx and integrate vx dt from the initial time, which is 0 seconds, to the final time t. dx is integrated from the initial position x0 to the final position x. We previously found that vx is equal to vx0, and we can pull vx0 out of the integral because it is constant. The integral of dx is x, and the integral of dt is t. Evaluating x from the initial position to the final position gives x minus x0, and evaluating t from the initial time to the final time gives t minus 0. After rearranging the equation, we are left with x is equal to x0 plus vx0 times t. This means that the x-coordinate of the object can change in time. If vx0 is greater than 0, the object will move in the positive x-direction. If vx0 is less than 0, the object will move in the negative x-direction. And if vx0 is equal to 0, the x-coordinate will not change in time. We can perform a similar set of steps for the velocity in the y-direction, vy. vy is equal to the time rate of change of y which is written as dy dt. Let's rearrange the equation to isolate dy and integrate vy dt from the initial time, which is 0 seconds, to the final time t. dy is integrated from the initial position y0 to the final position y. We previously found that vy is equal to vy0 plus g times t. This integral can be broken up into two pieces and integrated separately. For the first integral, we can pull out vy0 since it is constant, and for the second integral, we can pull out g since it is constant. The integral of dy is y, and the integral of t times dt is t squared divided by 2. Evaluating y from the initial position to the final position gives y minus y0. Evaluating t from the initial time to the final time gives t minus 0. And evaluating t squared from the initial time to the final time gives t squared minus 0 squared. After rearranging the equation, we are left with y is equal to y0 plus vy0 times t plus 1 half times g times t squared. This means that the y coordinate of the object changes in time. Whether the y coordinate is increasing or decreasing at a particular time will depend on the initial velocity. If we had assumed that the value of g is positive 9.81 meters per second squared instead of negative 9.81 meters per second squared, the expression for y would be y0 plus vy0 times t minus one-half g times t squared. You can use either equation as long as you are consistent with your signs. We can determine the shape of the path taken by the object by eliminating t between the equations for x and y. Let's solve the equation on the left for t. Then plug the expression for t into the equation on the right. The resulting equation describes a parabola. So in summary, to get the projectile motion equations, we assume that the acceleration in the x direction is zero and the acceleration in the y direction is only due to gravity which points downward and is constant. With these accelerations, we found expressions 
for the x and y components of the velocity at a time t and the x and y coordinates at that time t as well.